Welcome to episode 59 of the official podcast for Guardian One, a destiny group dedicated to the prosperity of guardians everywhere. We broadcast live Thursdays at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 Eastern, right here on twitch.tv forward slash Guardian One Network. My name is Remy, and tonight I am joined by River. I bet you missed me, didn't you? Crimson Warlock. I like 310 weapons. Jez. Good morning. And Agrios. Greetings, Guardians. We are going to be talking about all things Destiny, but first, housekeeping. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening in on the podcast, however it is that you're choosing to listen. Be sure to follow Guardian One on Twitter at G1Net. That's G, the number one, N-E-T. In addition, be sure to check out the Guardian One website at GuardianOne.net. You can also send us feedback and messages to our email, feedback at GuardianOne.net. Also, you'll have a Bungie.net's forums group. We utilize that for forums excuse me use that for comments and feedback so be sure to join the conversation that's going on over there big thank you to all those currently in the tri- uh, twitch chat we love you as remy said at the top of the podcast you can watch the show live at twitch.tv slash guardian network we broadcast every thursday at 11 p.m eastern a.p. pacific and if you can't catch the show live you can always search for guardian one on itunes as well as the youtube channel at youtube.com slash guardian one network Guardian One is a proud member of the Guardian Radio Network, so be sure to check out the Guardian Radio Network website at theguardiansofdestiny.com. There you'll find all the different podcasts as part of the network, including the flagship podcast, Guardian Radio. They broadcast every Monday night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash Guardian Radio. You can also follow their Twitter account at Guardians of D and their YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Guardians of D. Other podcasts include Amos's Gaming, TTL Party Chat, Robust Radio, and if you want to read the Grimoire without actually reading it, you're lazy. But also check out Ghost and Echoes. That's it. <laughs> uh, I like that a lot, and and I'm I'm almost to the point where I agree with what you just said about them being lazy because for the longest time I talked about too. I talked about I want the grimoire in the game I don't want to go to somewhere else to read it even if that place is my phone like I I needed more I needed more to more intake of information before I could want to seek out any information and I feel like with the Taken King they've given me a jumping off point they've given me what I needed in like character interaction like there's something to be said about the way Eris is and then there's something to be said about the way Eris is in front of other people you know and and watching these cutscenes and getting to know these characters a little bit better with how they inter- they they interact with each other like watching Cade walk away you could see he had a plan on his on his face and he walked away and and Zavala's like hey we're not done talking about this and and Cade's like yep that's why I'm leaving <laughs> and so that just that adds such a, a layer to this onion. And so now, because I have this jumping off point, I'm really starting to want to dig further. Instead of having zero, absolutely zero jumping off point as far as uh, what I was looking for, now I've been given this, this little tidbit of what could be and what is out there. Uh, and so I am super excited about this. Uh, Agrios, uh, were you and... And so what is your relationship to the grimoire? Because I didn't want to read it. I still don't want to read it. But now I want to because of the Taken King. Has anything changed for you? Were you were you previously someone who didn't care about the grimoire and now you are? Or were you just eating everything Destiny anyways? I, I yeah, I was eating everything Destiny anyways. I, I pretty much ingested uh, I, all of the all of the grimoire prior to the Taken King more than once at least. 
Um, and I, I haven't, however, delved into the Taken King. I, I, I mean, you know, I was away for like almost a week there in the first week it was out. And I've been playing uh, catch up way too much to focus on Grimoire. Um, I'll go around and do my like dead ghost hunts and stuff like that. I haven't done any of that yet. Once I do, then I'll delve into the grimoire and see what it has to say. Once I have, uh, you know, something substantial there to read. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Jez, what about you? Were you prior to the taking King interested in, in grimoire or did you just eat it anyways? Uh, I don't think I've read too many except for certain subjects that I was interested in. However, Everyone's been talking about the giant epic of Grimorness that's the Book of Sorrows, so I have to check that out sometime. I but agree. Kevin there are many great sites out there. Yeah. What yeah, that read the ones that you don't have yet, you mean? Well, there's just, there's just a lot of great sites out Even to read the ones you don't have yet, but I just mean for as far as reading them better than Bungie's site, uh, Bungie's not exactly like the most fluid site for getting in there and reading them. There are some other sites like um, IshtarCollective.net that has them all listed, and you can either put them in uh, approximate chronological order, you can put them in the order they are in the grimoire, you can just click on a topic. Like, I want to know everything about Dragden York. So you can... Find his link, click on his link, and it's going to bring up all the Dregden York cards in chronological order for you to read all that we know about Dregden York. That's excellent. Yeah, that's, that's really insane. excellent. Uh, what about you, Crimson Warlock? Is, uh, is Grimoire something that's come in uh, a lot for you? Did you eat it up before? Are, are you familiar with these websites? Is this how you intake your Grimoire? No, I just go to the Bungie site when I'm curious about it. But I usually, I usually wait till I have like a good full set of stuff, so I'm not left in the dark and wondering, well, what's all this about or whatever. So I usually wait till I finish like a Grimoire set before I really get into it. So I haven't read much of Taking King stuff yet because there's still a lot I need to find. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Uh, what about you, River? Are you uh, a grimoire guy or are you not a grimoire guy? And how has the additional information of the Taken King helped or not helped with that? Okay. He's still in the, he's still out. (laughs) (laughs) Apparently he's not back yet. Uh, Okay. So this brings me to the next question. What I want to know uh, Agrios, what are you doing in Destiny right now? Like you, you said that you haven't gotten into the Grimoire very far, but what is it that you're doing instead? Like you can list, uh, you know, specific, um, specific, um, but just what are you doing? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I've been playing catch up now. I'm, I'm getting to the point where I am caught up. Like my, I am more than raid worthy i've just been kind of waiting on my uh my group to get their things together at the moment um but yeah i intend on raiding i wanted to raid last week but i intend on raiding this week with all my characters i they're all between 295 and 297 at the moment uh i i'm to the point now where aside from raiding i'm going to start hunting like the dead ghost and the more leisurely activities but, uh, I mean, until now, it was pretty much, you know, grinding strikes, grinding Court of Oryx, um, getting the quest done for the first time on the first character the whole way through. I'm just about to the point where I'm, I'm wrapping up the final quests on my, my Warlock into the, you know, Taken King and whatnot. But I, I've barely touched the quest on my Titan and my Hunter. So, uh, yeah, that, that's what I've been grinding through. I've been trying to catch up with my Arms Day and all that sort of stuff because, uh, you know, being that I was away, some of those things suffered the first week. Yeah. Yeah. Have you gotten to the end of the third, the third go around on each of your, or on, on each character? The third go around of what? The arms, the gunsmith um, reputation. Oh, no. I, uh, my, my warlock, I, I think just hit rank three today. And my other two characters are ranked like two and three quarters at the moment. So once I go, I have to do the Arms Day weapons on those two yet, though, so they'll hit rank three by then. Got it. Well, there's a really cool prize waiting for you at the end of the quest of the third uh, go-around on your Arms Day level. So look forward to that. Um, 
So what are you doing, uh, Jez? You uh, you didn't have the same week minus a week since the beginning of time like Agrios. What is it that you're doing? Like, where? What are your characters at? Um, far as light level, yeah. Um, I think the only one that can't get to three hundred is my warlock right now, but that's I haven't done a raid on the warlock yet. But it's mostly about just tuning my gear to what I want it to be, what I want it to look like, to be honest. And uh, just doing arms day stuff. It's just general things that I know I need to get up. Uh, you know, you bring up a really cool point and something I want to touch on maybe a little bit later after River shows back up. Uh, but but the way your gear looks like, I'm really pleased. I'm really, really pleased with the gear leveling system in Destiny right now. It's it's a little bit more RNG than I, than I would like. I'd like a little bit more of a this activity is going to raise it up. But as far as finding a piece of gear that you like and being able to raise it as high as the highest cap uh, and, and the whole infusing, like that's really awesome. Uh, and so it's cool to know that you are uh, working your way through there and that you only have one character that's not at 300. I've got, I've got two 290, 292s, uh, one on each system, and then the rest are some kind of 280, 270. Like I've I've been working on it, but it's I feel like I didn't catch the right um, the right way to do everything in the very beginning, and so now I'm playing catch up. Um, what about you, Crimson Warlock? Where are you in Destiny? What are your light levels? Um, so I've got my Warlock at uh, two ninety seven. Um, haven't completed the raid on him yet, and my Titan is at two seventy nine halfway through the story and I have a level five hunter. Yeah, like <laughs> 17 um, so yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of still gearing up. I'm actually trying to get my swords on all of my characters so I can just get all three exotic quests done at once. Um, so that is going to be some farming to do, but hoping to get the raid done soon. And then after that, I think it will be kind of what Jez is doing and find the, find the gear that I want and, Hopefully I can get the perks that I want on the gear that I want and then level all that up. You know, I've, I've felt pretty good about deleting some of the gear that I've come across uh, just because it's not, it doesn't have the perks that I want. Like there's some that are like, oh, gain more super, ener- uh, super energy when uh, meleeing, you know, minions of the darkness. That one's okay, but it pales in comparison to gain additional super energy for killing minions of the darkness. Like that doesn't, that doesn't specify. It has to be one way or the other. And so I will, I will take the long way around to level that piece of gear up, even though. So, so here's how I do it. I keep the the top number, whatever whatever that is in whatever slot that is. I keep that just like that, and then I sub level other things in the background that aren't going to like at some point I will be within five points of the gear that I've been keeping using and then I'll do it. That's what I do with my Havoc Pigeon. I freaking love my Havoc Pigeon. It's the it's what's brought me <laughs> it's what's brought me the most joy in in Destiny taking King so far. Um okay so River <clears throat> uh two questions. Number one, the the grimoire. The grimoire is it was something that I didn't want to deal with outside of the game. I really wanted the grimoire in the game. I needed some background and information in the game. And on some levels, through the use of being able to scan certain things, they're able to give you these little tidbits of information. And in addition to that, there's this new narrative where you see Eris interact with Cade. You see Cade interact with Zavala. Uh, you you know you you see these people interact on a level that makes me want to know more, and so I'm just on I'm just on my way to hitting the point where I'm going to start digging through information on websites like the Ishtar Collective that have the grimoire searchable and you know hashtagable, like you can you can go through and find out what you're looking for. So what what is your relationship to the grimoire before and after the Taken King? You mean like how far I've gotten? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, were you were far. you just eating it before Taken King, and and now you're keeping up? You say not very far. Not, I think not he's very far. reading it, collecting it. 
if we're I'm I'm not sure we're both talking about the same thing. Maybe I'm wrong, but he's talking about like reading the, 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 the actual lore. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> so you uh so so it's not been a big deal to you thus far? Uh, not not particularly. I mean whenever something interesting comes up from like some of the other podcasts or somebody's mentioned something uh interesting, I'll I'll go out and read some of it, but I got way too much other stuff to do to to really dive in deep. Like uh, I know one of my Twitter followers mentioned something about uh Oryx on on Twitter and I was like, oh that that sounds interesting. Let me go check out the uh, Book of Sorrows. That's right. She was talking <laughs> about Book of Sorrows and how awesome that that the whole lore is on that. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll I'll check out a few things and it is it is really, really good. But at the time I was at work so it was, I couldn't really concentrate too much onto it. For those who aren't uh, who aren't as uh, lore inclined, but are interested in maybe the base story, there are some interesting uh, uh, too long didn't reads on Reddit. If you want to nutshell some of the new information we've gotten about the hive from the grimoire and such. Mm. Excellent. You know, uh, somebody. I think it was Penny Arcade, but it, it could be it could be somebody somebody else they did a cartoon uh like a little uh a comic on some of the background lore like i think one of the characters was complaining that there's no story in destiny and then the other character says you know actually the the that green thing glowing on the side of thorn is the bullet from the last word and the person who was who was saying there is no story to destiny was blown away. You know, how can you not capitalize on this? How can you not make this part of the story? And then asked, well, is there anything else that we should know? And that person said, strange coins are made of people. And, (laughs) and so, uh, and, and the, and the other character looked really, really pretty distressed. (laughs) Um, but yeah, I'm 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 really on the verge of just digging through all of the lore and and kind of matching it up against what I already know. And uh, I don't know. I think it's going to be really cool. Uh, and then the second question: What are you doing in Destiny right now? Like, what is it that is that is keeping you? What, like, what is it that you're doing when you play Destiny? Okay, so my first goal was to at least run the raid on Xbox One one time. And we failed. We got all the way to Oryx, and then I, I ran out of time for the week. And since that week was over, I was I was like, man, I should probably go play on the PS4 now. So now I'm trying to get that thing raid ready, and it's only at 240, 2.42 as of this second. So got a long way to go. I don't know if I can do. I don't know if I can join you guys in hard mode. <laughs> Got it. That's that's really it, man. Just trying to get that light level up so I can unlock everything, and then I can dive into some of the some of the cool stuff that they have to offer. Yeah, I I have not been in the raid at all. I uh, I wanted to take Agrios and Sharks and just jump into the beginning and look at it, and you know mm-hmm. look around and see what's happening. But but did you guys do that? No, no, we did not. Sharks, uh, sharks maintain that that's not going in blind anymore. <laughs> uh, and you know, I, I argued that, well, I mean, it's not like we're going to get very far. Like who doesn't know this beginning part? And we really don't. Uh, so what we want to do is we are looking for a group of three other people who also do not know anything about the raid. Like I, w- we want people who are going to go in blind, and and I, I think like we we will take people as singular. Uh, but <clears throat> what I'd really like to do is find another group of three guardians who play together often, who know each other's weaknesses, you know, who who know what what they're what each are capable of. Uh, and I think that I have that with Agrios and Sharks. Like I know what to expect of them. Like like we like we don't have any like. You know, there's no, you know, let's do the 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 panda tactic. You know, we don't have any like code names or anything like this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that makes me sad. Wombat, wombat blue, wombat blue. Like there's nothing, nothing like this. Um, you know, Muskrat. but 
That's my favorite. <laughs> Sleepy Weasel is down. Sleepy Weasel is down. <laughs> and no, we don't have Terrible. anything like this, but but I feel like I've played so much Destiny with them that I, I know what they can expect of me and I, and I know what to expect of them. And so what I'd really like is three other Guardians who also have not gone in, don't know anything about it. Um, but I mean, we don't always get what we want. So Exactly. <laughs> Um, so I don't know, like, like Strider says he's only been through one part. He's only been through the beginning part and that he wants to, uh, and then he knows how to do a, a separate part. And so like, part of me thinks like, well, we could take him in, you know, but then the problem, the problem that I have, cause I've had multiple offers of just, oh, well, I'll go with you, but I won't say anything. The problem mm-hmm. then is that we don't have six brains working on this puzzle. We got right. three That's dudes it. holding out information. Sure like they, you can. They can't. Well, no, but then it, no, but then it's three people. Then it's three no, people no, no, no. trying to figure it out. Uh, sure, you can because I, I thought of this too, and I I I remember all the different ideas that I had whenever we were first encountering everything for the first time. I remember all the different, you know, the thought process that I was going to, and you know, that's my plan whenever Belle does her blind raid because she she offered me a spot, and I was like, all right. I think that's probably what I'll do is just offer up all the different tactics and thoughts that I was I was having during my first run and have them go off of that. So you may yeah, maybe you don't have six brains, but little so ideas you're, you're, you're going to suggest to them things, you know, to be not false <laughs> and not working and untrue to lead them Absolutely. astray. Well, see, that's, that's not good, though, either. <laughs> How is that not good? I don't want because it's the same that damn thing that I was thinking the first the time. The other problem is, like, with people who have done it and done it before, like, even if they're holding back to let us figure out puzzles and things, like, certain parts you need to shoot people in certain orders and things, blah, 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 like that, maybe. And, like, <laughs> what, who, are they just going to, like, decide to shoot the wrong people? Like a new person who didn't know what's going on would, or are they going to, you know, go to exactly the right place and shoot exactly the right person? Yeah, like I'm the whole combat, you know, method and everything. I, I mean, if that's what I did, that's what I would be doing. You know, okay, so <laughs> so River, I still I still want people who haven't gone in at all, but oh, yeah, totally. I really <laughs> I see I see exactly what you're saying, and I agree that that's definitely the next best thing. Like you're you're totally right. It, you remembered thinking I should jump down this hole and see if that beats this guy. Uh, and <laughs> I agree with that. I that. that may or may not have happened. Actually, just learning what's going on and knowing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so so I get I could take you. I could take you along, and then you could give like, oh, <laughs> you could. It would be funny too. I could see you even doing it in some kind of like character, like. <laughs> Where does this lead? It goes down. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened. See, that's the same crap that happened. Right, Sharks wants to know if you've been cheating, Agrios, because you're like, sometimes you might have to shoot somebody in a certain order. I mean, I don't know. I didn't look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm just making some court at work. Like, just take the stuff I've experienced in the rest of the game, figuring that it's going to be, you know, difficult versions of that in the raid. Uh, you know what, though? we got to do it soon because Amber... Yes. Amber Harton, I think on Twitter. Oh, I she, love her. She offered the biggest spoiler so far, and I'm so sad that I didn't. I'm so Oops. sad that I didn't already run it because recently she tweeted out something that was like hugely spoilery, and it makes me sad. So let me I guess spoil. the end. <laughs> no, I. You know what though? The the movie, one of the movies of the week today, offers a little bit, a little bit too much as well. Uh, oh, so, so well, second, I didn't watch the week Boy after doll. it came out. The movie of the week was spoilery. Oh, I didn't watch. Yes, it. I didn't <laughs> watch the story. <laughs> show how we didn't watch it. <laughs> yeah. So Man, continue guys, not watching. Yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. You guys need to just hurry up and do it. Yeah. Right. right so yeah. So so this weekend, um, what are you doing this when weekend, do we Agrios? Why don't we make plans right now on the show? There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm getting you on record. <laughs> can't back out now <laughs> you know you act like i don't want to do it like this is like uh-huh. come over and pull this tree stump out of my yard <laughs> <laughs> because we would all rather be doing that my septic tank is leaking no guys i can't do it can't play destiny right now <laughs> what's more important like tree stumps and septic tanks or oryx come on 
Uh, Shark says if we don't do it soon, he's going to solo it and be the first <laughs> community. Uh, and so, and I agree. I agree. We really need to do it before he does it by himself. <laughs> you know what? That's something that I offered them too. Like maybe we should go in and try and cheese it. Like, like we'll go to a situation and we'll think, how are three people going to do this? You know, like, yeah. it, like all of Crota or all of Crota was basically cheesable. You know, there, uh-huh. there's certain parts that are a little bit tougher than others. Like, like, can you do the bridge by yourself, Agrios, or do you need a separate person? For what, the bridge in Crota? Yeah. I can do it by myself. Okay, so so there it is. Absolutely soloable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um but uh why don't we why don't we get into what's going on in the in the world of destiny, Agrios? All right. Well, uh <clears throat> earlier this week we saw um the return of uh, the daily activity Lost to Light. Uh, with it, brought another chance to uh, claim a uh, secret exotic. Uh, I mean, it's all throughout the community. It spoilers, I guess, a little bit, but uh, Black Spindle has been returned. Uh, Do you guys have a chance to get Black Spindle? Who, who got their Black Spindle all around? I got one this week. Oh, man, Sharks is going to be... <laughs> okay, so, um, is there not a Grimoire card for it? Because nope. I swear there isn't, which is so weird. Because it's yeah, a secret. sure there is. It's called Black Hammer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's not. There's a... no Grimoire for Black. Yeah, Hammer. I know there's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I didn't get it. I tried once with Turks and um, Strider. I think it was Turks and Strider. Was it Turks and Strider? Yes. Yeah, yeah Turks and Strider. Uh, and we got the boss to about, I don't know, we got him down to about two-thirds. And then Turks had to go. But we definitely needed a uh, a better strategy than what we had going on. I saw one where you just put a bubble at the dude's feet and then hit him with a bunch of swords. <laughs> that looks that looks like it, nice. it works pretty well. That, As, that sounds totally legit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I watched yeah. a video of it. I watched a video of it, and, and, it, and it worked. Like, they got it. <laughs> Let's yep. see. Our, our, our strat was uh, we, were, we were three Sunsinger Warlocks. We all went full ham with shotguns and swords. Rez did the same thing. And then um, once we all respawned eventually, two of us were on um, ad detail and the other one was just sniping him with a really good sniper rifle. <laughs> Crimson Warlock, did you just say full ham? Full ham. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Did Brad, you guys see that the... full spaghetti. <laughs> spaghetti really <laughs> yep. he's canadian yeah. <laughs> no no not here math class then it should oh. still be ham canadian bacon oh canadian bacon full canadian bacon i don't oh. want canadian bacon to be honest because i'd much prefer bacon i like Bacon's them both. pretty, pretty I good. think there's room enough for both of them <laughs> did you guys see that the legend himself soloed that black spindle uh deal yep, yep. how freaking crazy i watched yeah. that video and he's just, he's beasty, man. It's freaking incredible. That's, he he did have the exotic sword to do it, though. Hey. Uh, is it the exotic sword that shoots that, that buzzsaw? The yeah. Arc one. Yeah. The arc. Man, that looks awesome. I did watch that in one of the movies of the week. There, They show that. And I said, mm-hmm. I said out loud, I said, oh, shit. <laughs> like, I couldn't. <laughs> Like when I watch yeah, the movie that of the happen. week is <laughs> it, somebody cleaning up in Rumble using one. Might as well just talk about that now. And uh, <laughs> it's quite an impressive run. It's just uh, it, it, it's funny too because he he's just walking around, like he's just he's not even running. He's just like walking around in Rumble, and as soon as he sees one, then they're they're gone. You know, I, this is what it's a like. On Venus. This is what it's like watching gameplay from from Bife. Bife's gameplay is a bunch of dudes running out. And being like, "Hey, what's going on? Like, let's let's exchange iced tea recipes, <laughs> you know." Uh, and but except that Bife is still playing Destiny, and these people are offering him recipes. Uh, that's what it looked like. Uh, and and Bife posted a video about him uh, going um, un unbroken with the chaperone, uh, and I commented that he would be able to go unbroken with a VHS copy of Crocodile Dundee. 
in in Crucible because <laughs> that's who Bife that. is. That that's who Bife is. He is he's that guy. Just because you can win with it doesn't mean that other people should even try it. <laughs> you know, and it's just like I, I got an unbroken with it. It's not a terrible weapon, guy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Right at first, I wanted to tweet that if he like he could he could go unbroken running around with a pool noodle, but I didn't want it to get weird and and Twitter and people with texts you know like I I could just see it going really really dark really quickly, <laughs> by with a pool noodle. Bife, so uh, Bife could uh, go unbroken with a jar of honey. Right, right. Bife could go uh, unbroken. The honey reference. Walking backwards, <laughs> Bife could go unbroken, not killing anyone. <laughs> Um, man, you guys put this man on a pedestal. <laughs> You've seen his videos, right? You've seen how many times he's gone unbroken, right? Yeah, but you I guys mean, aren't really that tough on PS4 either. <laughs> well, remember, you haven't accrued the ranking to get against the tough guys, so... No, I haven't. Sure I don't you know. Haven't. How does that work? Do you know how that works, Jez? I don't know. I'm just assuming that much longer... Well, not streaks of winning, but uh, larger win ratio probably puts you in with higher people. Probably. Yeah. So far, I've been pretty much sitting everybody down, so I'm I'm good so far. <laughs> I, I have crappy I have crappy gear too, man. I have starter gear. Well, not now. I'm two forty two, but still. Oh man! Yeah, it, crucible. My has first been freaking so much crucible. Fun. My first freaking crucible match. I went like seven point something KD. You know why is because they 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 nerfed um, Thorn and the last word because yep. Crucible has been so much fun for me. Even yes. shotguns, even like shotguns are their last refuge. And as long mm-hmm. as you give yourself X amount of feet from the opening of where they're appearing to them, like I've picked off so many people trying to run shotgun me. Like I just, mm-hmm. I've been putting it down. Uh, I've been using my Suros DIS forty three. That thing is a beast. I've got yeah, it's I've pretty sweet. quite a few different versions over the arms days. Uh, and every configuration is is amazing. So much fun. Uh, continuing, Agrios? <coughs> continuing. So uh, <coughs> for uh, Black Spindle, uh, it, there, it is currently uh, it is currently bugged. It's still dropping at uh, 310. Uh, and the the blueprint version releases at 300. Bungie has stated that this is an error and that uh, a future update they'll be reduced to the appropriate 290 lights, similar to other exotics. However, the uh, the items that you infuse with the black spindle uh, those will not be affected. Uh, currently, one shard and 2500 glimmer gets you another 300 black spindle, and uh, so. In effect, you can level, you know, as long as you keep spending that, you can level every secondary you would want up to 300 currently. Man, that's cheeky. <laughs> and um, uh, being that they're going to change the 310 uh, spindles down to 290s eventually, it behooves you to probably just go ahead and use those to get other uh, secondaries up to. 310 or higher than 300 anyway and then go ahead and level up another black spindle from scratch man that's awesome uh and is the gun itself really awesome does it look cool and is it very usable um well i i haven't managed to level mine up i haven't any time to level mine up at all so it's still just working from uh the the base model and the base model doesn't really have uh, anything too special going on with it but uh just using it so far it seems good uh, the scope is bugged. Um, why do you image... need? Why do you need time when you can just throw fifteen modes into it? Well, yeah, I could do that too. I haven't got around to doing that either. But basically, it's exactly like a black hammer, except it's shiny for some reason, and it is missing the extra damage to hive perk. And it glows differently a little bit. And uh, also, the scope is currently bugged in that it doesn't change the image, like the scope actual UI doesn't change regardless of which scope you put on, but but the zoom and the stats actually do. Interesting. That's funny. I do like the sound of this one, though. I like the sound of it over the black hammer. I think it's a little better, in my opinion. Do you use it much, Crimson Warlock? I, w- I was just using it uh, last night when I got it. 
for a little bit. And I I actually feel like it handles just a tad better than the Black Hammer for me anyway. But I've enjoyed it. I I actually, though, I was like, well, this is 310. If they're going to change it, I, I bought another 300 and I infused my 310 into it. So I actually have a 308 one right now. But it'll stay 308. And I'm okay with that. Jez, do you well, use it much? You don't know if it's going to stay 308 yet. Well, it's been infused, right? So they said that that's yeah, but that doesn't change. guarantee anything. Bungie never said that would keep. They just said all black spindles are were going to be reduced. So we don't know whether that's going to save it or not. That's just speculation. Man, that's a really good point. Because they said that weapons that you used uh, the black spindle to infuse into... Uh, those were going to stay whatever they were, but the black spindle itself was going to be nerfed. So yeah, that would be crazy if you uh, if you spent your time doing that, Crimson. Yeah, and, well, we'll uh, see what happens, I guess. <laughs> I, right. But I had a black spindle, and I infused my black spindle into it, so it shouldn't change, right? <laughs> uh, well, so the, the statement, the only statement we got from Cosmo said word for word, all black spindles will be set to two ninety. But weapons you infused with them will not be affected. Hmm. So people are speculating that maybe if you have an infused black spindle, it's going to protect it from this. But the first part of the statement says all black spindles will be set to 290. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see what happens. It's all right. It didn't I'm change just telling my life. It won't work. 10 to 308. All right. Continuing. <clears throat> Continuing. So immediately on the heels of this uh, Lost to Light daily activity uh, coming out, the uh, an update appeared the next morning, and everybody feared it was to convert the Black Spindle back to that 290, but lo and behold, that was absent on the list of actual updates. Uh, <clears throat> in, instead, uh, they fixed some things that uh, were, were fairly bothersome to everyone in the community. Uh, they uh, fixed an issue where Titan Sunbreakers could rapidly spam the Hammer of Soul attack. It was uh, ridiculously game-breaking. If you didn't witness it, basically by mashing on the uh, bumper buttons, uh, a Titan could glitch into an arm throw where he launched his hammers in ridiculous rapid succession. Uh, and this could be used in PvP or anything else. So it was. If good you ever play. used it, you know it wasn't an issue because it was awesome. <laughs> especially in a solar nightfall that sounds awesome but yeah keep going sorry <laughs> they also fixed an issue where uh, players were occasionally not getting loot when opening chests specifically on the dreadnought this uh this issue occurred after the last update to fix other issues uh mainly the ability to infinitely loot chests using loading zones and such but uh, now the chest and the dreadnought should be giving awards as appropriate. Uh, in strikes, they fixed an issue where players were not earning their rightfully owed equipment from Valis to Ark. He, uh, after the last update, he mysteriously stopped dropping his uh, his rewards. So that that should be fixed now as well. Uh, while we're still on the technical side. Uh, they're investigating reports of people losing Arms Day orders when uh, they're redeemed from the, the weapons section of the character inventory. Like when they're in orbit or elsewhere, when your package says it's redeemable, not discarding it, you can actually click the button to redeem it just from your inventory. And if you do, uh, the orders are just simply disappearing from your inventory with the, uh, no ability to get them back or claim them from the gunsmith. So to avoid this issue, only redeem completed Arms Day orders from the gunsmith in the tower. Done. Uh, Bungie has also updated their store with uh, fresh loots, as they put it, including uh, a new weapon, the, the, the new weapon manufacturer's logo, logo apparel, as uh, well as the Engram stress balls that we saw them give away at Gamescom and uh, other special events. Uh, these are available as a set of four, one of each color, for $20. And uh, <clears throat> that, that's pretty much it for the technical issues. We move into the update, which is all about what's coming up in the Crucible. Okay, so hold on one second. I'm, so I was looking at this earlier, this picture for the week, weekly update, uh, and I've got it up on the screen for those of you who are watching it on that format. And so I, I'm looking at this, and I'm like, okay... 
this Titan <clears throat> right here looks amazing. I'm going to play Iron Banner for this helmet. This helmet looks awesome. Uh, the gear is okay. These shoulder pads, they've, they've appeared previously. That They're all right. You know, chest piece, okay, whatever. Uh, Hunter, awesome. Look at this face piece. This, is, this looks great. They don't really show it here, but there's a wolf sitting on top of this guy's head. Uh, which, which I think is is probably pretty cool. Um, and so I will I will play on my hunter to get this. And then I looked at this warlock, <clears throat> and this warlock looks like he's looking down at his shoes, like he stepped in shit. Like if you look at this picture, <laughs> it looks like he's he like he's aiming at somebody, and then he realizes like, oh man, like he's looking down. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> I didn't even um, think of that. <laughs> so he looks sad, uh, but on top of him oh. feeling sad, I think that this helmet isn't a big enough departure from the the previous warlock helmets. Like I don't know what it is with this horn thing. Yeah. Uh, the whole beautiful- on the warlock helmets has got to go man it's, right uh, i mean it's cool and i dig it but i feel like this doesn't like this this titan helmet is amazingly different than what's come before uh and i'm going to get this one first it looks awesome uh, i don't have any previous iron banner gear uh i'm i decided what? i didn't i didn't want any of it to begin with because it was going to take me too long to grind out these things and then when the second iron banner came around uh and all the first first gen gear was gone i was really upset i didn't get that titan mark i'm so disappointed in myself that i did not get that titan mark because the first one was amazing it was beautiful and flowing uh and i wanted it and i didn't get it so then the second time around i didn't get anything the only thing i have from the iron banner is an ephrodite's spear on the xbox uh and it's not a great role but it's it looks cool and it's from a period of time that will never come again so uh, I'm I'm keeping that thing around, uh, but so, definitely looking forward to getting this. Hunters are the only class that can officially hold seven swords, because they can hold one of every sword, and then they have that little short sword on their belt. Damn. Might uh, be they can't use it, but yeah. At what point does there become too many swords? There's never too many swords. Because I've <laughs> I've seen situations where like my hunter has one on his belt and on his chest and on his arm and I think I'm going to be shooting people much more than I'm going to be throwing these you know okay <laughs> um, if you've ever like played an archetype of a rogue you can never have too many daggers because you always want to either throw one leave someone pinned somewhere with one like there's never a reason to not have too many daggers. Well, all right then. You heard it from the from the horse himself, Agrios. Uh, let's uh, let's hit it. So the way you like Havoc Pigeon, I wonder how you're going to feel about the Iron Banner sidearm, seeing as it looks just like Havoc Pigeon, but Ooh. it's probably cooler. I can't <laughs> wait to find out more about it. <laughs> all right. So uh, coming up next in Destiny this week, the update. Like I said, all about the Crucible. We have. Uh, <clears throat> We have the Iron Banner returning on October 13th, but with a few notable changes. Control's going to return. Power still matters, but they're adjusting da- the damage curves to work with the new measurement system. They bring in Crucible designer Jeremiah uh, Pichel to uh, explain the other changes. The, uh, the tempered buff is now automatically applied and continues to grow in effectiveness, effectiveness each day of the event. Uh, the alt catch-up buff, and iron medallion mechanics are unchanged. Uh, Potential match completion rewards now include both weapons and armor. Uh, Before, you just there was only a chance for iron banner weapons. And uh, this time, they're going to be matching the same items available from Lord Saladin during each event. Unlike previously, uh, he would offer the the guns from that he had for sale during the last Iron Banner event as rewards during the current Iron Banner. And uh, the drop rates have been increased and are intended to be the primary source of rewards from the Iron Banner. If you don't get what you're hoping for, you have the option to visit Lord Saladin instead. Your purchase from Lord Saladin now requires legendary marks instead of Glimmer. New new emblems have been added to his inventory. Uh, 
all new bounties, including nine daily bounties, three per day, and three new weekly bounties, which reward legendary marks. The recommended minimum late for Iron Banner is 2.30, and uh, only level 40 Guardians can lead a fire team. So what do you guys <laughs> think about the changes? I actually have, I, yeah, I actually have a couple things uh, to say about this real quick. In addition to what's in the update, I noticed that if you click on the Iron Banner selection on the main Bungie page, it'll take you to that Iron Banner page, right? And it doesn't look like they updated the Power Matters part because it's still saying, what is it? Defense rating affects how you take damage, attack rating how you inflict damage, right? Lower level players wielding fully upgraded weapons should still be considered a very credible threat. Nah, I don't think that's going to happen this time around. And there was one other thing. Oh, and it looks like Iron Banner weapons may still be reforgeable because that hasn't been updated whether if it's changed or not. Just saying. Down, down at the very bottom of that page, reset and upgrade. As far as the changes itself, I'm really happy. Super happy and super excited for this next Iron Banner. I can't wait to... Ah, jeez. I don't even know if I should really go into PS4. No, because I'm at 240. But yeah, I'm definitely going to sit some fools down in Xbox. It's going to be great. I feel like Iron Banner is this. <clears throat> it's a push. It's it's something that you can achieve even if you're basically no good in, in Crucible. I feel like the way they've set up Iron Banner, it's... It's a, a, a thing that you can very slightly push uphill. And so you said that the, the tempered, it says the tempered buff is now automatically applied and continues mm -hmm. to grow in effectiveness each day of the event. So you don't even need to go and purchase it anymore. Everybody's already got it. And so there's just this curve leading up to the end. Um, I think that that's really cool. I think that, that that'll add to it. Uh, but I feel like... like the Iron Banner is something that everyone can do. It's 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 basically, you know, how many games can you even just play? Because even if you're the world's best player, you could still lose on a team that is just getting murdered and murdered and murdered. You know, so it's so in when you put it into that perspective, as long as you suck the least that you possibly can you know, it's possible that you're going to be put on a team with five dudes that do really good um, and and they will carry you and your worthless times through these events. So it's really just something you have to put time into. So if you haven't if you haven't played it before because you feel like there's there's this this bar to entry, the Iron Banner is really like just a trough. It's really just go there and get what you want out of it. I mean, it, it does help to win. You do get more more points faster by winning that's indisputable but but just do it like i i really had a good time with my uh with my time in the iron banner uh it wasn't very much but it was a lot of fun it, it, crucible has really been a lot of fun uh the way bungie has put their legendary marks behind you know just do one just do one Crucible match a day, this specific one, and we'll give you 15 marks no matter what you've done. I've played Crucible every single day, and I feel like I'm just getting better and better at it. I feel way more comfortable. Uh, yeah. And all of this sounds like they really have put a lot of thought into how do we get as many people in here as possible. You know? Yeah. I really, I'm really glad that they redid the loot system. Uh it really seems like to me that legendary equipment isn't really as plentiful as it was prior to the patch. You're kind of getting more blues to infuse that kind of stuff with, because I don't have them. Uh, but it's really creating a lot of good variety in the Crucible and the PvP space. And it's pretty much up for grabs on whether or not your gear is good enough to take down other people. So I definitely do encourage everybody to at least try it out this time around and see how your weapons measure up. See how how much power matters now. Give it a shot. 
Right. I'm really looking forward to that, too, even though I'm not yet at the top. Like, I remember going into the Iron Banner and thinking, why is this level 22 character killing me over and over when I'm level 30? You know, it's because power didn't matter nearly as much. Like you were saying, <clears throat> this mm-hmm. was old, old information, you know, a lower level character with fully upgraded weapons will still be a threat. You know, like I, I'd really like to see people go in and just totally get their clocks cleaned and then say to themselves, man, I really need to get better gear. You know, I, well, if I you remember the, that. the very first iron banner almost had no, uh, power mattering. <laughs> and right. then uh, people complained. Right. And yeah. then they said they changed it and power still didn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I don't expect them to make it matter too awfully much because they they stated here that the minimum level they they think you should go in at is two thirty. Well, that that's a pretty significant difference from someone who's say three hundred. So if they don't think that there's going to be much of a power difference between a, someone who's at two thirty and three hundred, I don't think the power difference is going to be that noticeable between the people in your match. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess we'll find out. Uh, will you guys be playing much Iron Banner? Uh, the people who haven't been talking, River, I know that you said that you are Agrios, Jez, Crimson Warlock. Of course. I might. Depends. Probably just for the cloak and then I'll bounce. <laughs> uh, Crimson Warlock? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a go and uh, see, see if I like the way things are. I mean, I'm not very good at uh, crucible at all and um i've been trying to to get better slowly but uh yeah i like the iron banner it's it's an interesting challenge for the week and it's something new so i'll definitely do it agrios yep definitely i'll i'll uh run it with all my characters probably get all the cool stuff although I don't know what to do right now, so there, there is a huge chunk of gear on the chopping block at the moment. Like, I have at least one full set of each of the classes' armor from the first Iron Banner, from the second Iron Banner, as well as at least one of every weapon that's been released from the Iron Banner. And they're all pretty much useless. Collecting dust. <laughs> uh, don't look like they're going to be anything that I can ever do with these armor pieces. I didn't use them when I had them practically, and they're all about to get deleted. So if I'm going to do that, I'm certainly not going to continue to work for pieces of armor that I don't intend to actually use. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. And that's sad. That makes me sad. Mm-hmm. Like, there'd be a whole lot more to the game that I would do if I could just play and collect things and just, you know, have them around. Just even if there's nothing for me to actually do, apartment or place for me to display them, I'd still collect them, given the space to put them there. Well, just, you'll want to collect the emblems, at least. Well, yeah, of course, because those are, like, permanent. But I- I'm talking more like, you know, getting one of each armor piece for each of the classes and stuff like that. I told you guys about, just before PAX, having to grind out to get the last Iron Banner emblem, because it's like, uh, I might not be able to get this again, because there's new ones. Totally. And then then it was, uh, yeah, it was a rush. Or not a rush, but it was... Crunch. It was a crunch. Yeah, crunch, yeah. <laughs> rush I did the same thing. Words. Yeah, yeah, I, I did had to do the same thing. Yeah. I did the same thing, too. <laughs> Just that one I, emblem that I just never going to get ever again. I got it. Man, I want to I want to say right now that <clears throat> Bungie adding in the the checklist style like being able to go to those giant iPads in the tower and and just see things that I've purchased and just being able to purchase something and then delete it and having it accessible and knowing how I could get the other ones like like the whole way they have that set up is so amazing and I'm so awesome. thankful for that. Like it's, you're always, what's you're that? always going to want to make sure something's there before you delete it, though. Oh, yeah. You know, there, right, but it's autom- automatically in there, right? There. There's, only about, there's currently about five emblems that are not in the emblem collection kiosk. Oh, oh man. Yeah, but that's, that's, due, that's due to a bug. It's not, it's not that they're not... Well, they might not be there, but most likely they're just not showing. The, hopefully, oh. but you haven't commented on it at all. Man, they haven't commented on why they decided to change the the look of those pieces of gear either. I'd really that like gear uh, one gear, right? 
<laughs> I still have it. I still have it. Narrow Gulf Savant Three. Like it's it's it was super cool. It was a super cool giant leather trench coat. <laughs> uh, sucks balls. Right, and now it's <clears throat> I don't know. I don't Crimson, know. You've been you've been watching those M Tash videos, like I suggested. Been watching them, yeah, uh, but uh, putting them into practice is is harder than than I would like it to be. <laughs> uh, as long as you as long as you get practice in, man, because that's really the the biggest thing is just practicing. Try to break some of the habits that you might have formed is pretty tough, you know. Yeah. No, I, I after watching M Tash's videos, which shout out to him because he's made some awesome Crucible School videos that that really break Phenomenal. down a lot of. Uh, a lot of PVB play and and what people are doing right and wrong, but uh, they've definitely helped me be a little more aware of my errors, and I've been trying to correct those. and And I have seen a slight increase in my KD and in gameplay. So, yeah, yeah. He he really breaks it down for those who aren't really too versed in Crucible play to you know little bitty chunks of of trying to help you put it into practice so i definitely suggest if you guys need some help with crucible uh, tactics or crucible improvement go check out his youtube videos m tashed m t a s h very good stuff yeah i agree i agree and really just watching anybody else play and and looking at what they're doing, you know, it's it's it, it it looks like magic at some point, and then once you really start to get into it, my my biggest thing for for those of you who don't who aren't very good in Crucible is watch your radar. Like this is like number one. Number one is radar. Like what you see in front of you is is deceiving, uh, and knowing where knowing where people possibly could be and where people definitely aren't is is easily the the most the best um, thing I can tell you, you know, it comes in a certain second is just giving yourself space between openings. Like, I don't know. I watch some people just run through open corridors. You know, it's I don't know. I want to make a series of videos actually uh, based around the idea that I am not some superhuman like Bife. Uh, <laughs> and shout out to <laughs> shout out to Fred Rock. Uh, somebody had I had mentioned Crocodile Dundee and. And Trogdor said, oh, you know, what's a bife? Uh, and and then he said, bife, question mark. And Fred Rock said, <laughs> he typed in and I read it as, that's not a bife. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a bife. <laughs> that's a bife. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, where do we leave off? Agrios, you talked. Crimson Warlock, you talked. Jez, River. All right. Uh, moving on. All right. So next on the schedule, uh, soon after the return uh, of the Iron Banner is the return of the Trials of Osiris on October 16th. Elimination still the game. And of course, of course, uh, power still matters. Uh, senior designer, Derek Carroll, let us know, lets us know what to expect for the trials in year two. Trials gear will now drop exclusively as end-of-match rewards for winning teams. The more you win, the better those drops will be. Uh, there's no need to return to Brother Vance. All rewards will come directly to you. Passage coins still drop for the losing team. Trials is still about winning, but uh, coins can help make that easier. Trials Passages now have a uh, details page containing your active buffs. You won't be able to add buffs once you've started your trial, so make sure you buy them first. Players that go undefeated on their passage will continue to be invited to the Lighthouse. Players may continue to play the Trials past nine wins, but they won't get any better gear. Brother Vance now has Trials bounties available each weekend to provide players with a way to get sweet Trials gear, even if they're not reaching the Lighthouse. Regular Crucible bounties are also still valid in Trials. And uh, we will attempt to match up teams with similar win counts. Now, that means if you have one win, we'll try to match you up with another team with only one win. And if you have eight wins, well, they just say yep. Uh, 
if we can't if they can't find a high quality match, they'll loosen the win requirements first. In other words, they'll not prioritize wins over low latency matches. Um, the overtime timer and elimination will now show zero instead of stopping at one when the time expires. And uh, teammate and enemy revives now have distinct audio cues, so you'll be able to tell the difference between those uh, just by sound. Uh, recommended minimum late for trials of Osiris is 290, and only guardians with at least 251 light can lead a fire team. So uh, what do you guys think about the changes for Trials? And does this make Trials a more enticing event for you, like with the uh, bounties and such that don't require you to necessarily get a lot of wins to get the gear? You know, that depends <clears throat> on what prizes they're talking about. Because there was two sets of gear <clears throat> available in Trials of Osiris. There was the ones that brought you up to the regular light level, and then there was the plus 42 ones, right? So Correct. If, so if all of them are dropping, you could get a plus 36 per se and a plus 40, uh, or plus 42 rather, um, then that will be really cool. I like the idea that, I like the idea that you don't have to go to the lighthouse um, because it's, it, it seems like it's, I mean, it's so, it's so hit or miss. Like some people talk about not being good in the crucible at all, going in there and just walking straight there. You know, some people have never been there. I've never been there. I really only tried it two or three times. You know, I, I, I died and then dying, you know, you basically, it's, it's, it almost feels pointless. Like there's other things that I can do that will continue my march to a higher light or to better guns or to something that I would rather have. And it, and it does sound like they've spent some time making it to where you don't have to be the baddest. Like I think, I think that with the amount of people that they will draw with what they've changed, I feel that the playing field will be a lot. There's going to be a lot more than just the really, really good people and the people that should, that don't know they shouldn't be trying this out. You know, like that's, that's the way I feel. Uh, Trials of Osiris ended up playing out is there was the people who were really good and every week went to the lighthouse you know, and then there was the people who were like, oh, I'm going to try this out. And they just get eaten. They just get eaten. Like, so I don't know. Uh, River, did you spend much time in the trials previously? And are you interested in it now? Uh, I didn't actually. I probably attempted trials maybe twice. And that's because, you know, gaming schedule wasn't really, uh, really good to try that crap over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, I am pretty interested to try this out, but I, I actually want to toss this over to the other guys first. Uh, let them weigh in, since I know they probably don't play as much Crucible as I do. <laughs> Jez? I might get to try it the first day, and then probably never play it again after that. But I'm just interested to see, with this new system, how much power matters. Yeah, that's really a big, a great big question mark for for how this is all going to play out. Crimson Warlock? Um, I actually have never stepped foot in Trials, um, kind of like River, every weekend. Like, I just didn't have time to sit down and find a fire team to even try it. Um, so I do want to try it. I really want to focus on, on it uh, this time around. Um, but... Uh, Honestly, I was kind of surprised when they kind of talked about how they're changing like the matchmaking of, you know, per wins because I would have thought that's how it would have been done the first time. But totally, totally. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm stoked. I want to. I want to try it out. But. Uh, Agress. Uh. I will definitely be going in to try it out. I'm interested in seeing how the changes, like uh, the bounties and stuff like that. Like, I, it was not my thing the first year. I'm not that great at Crucible, especially not that particular Crucible. I'm better at team style events. Um, I'm okay when I'm match made against people I'm supposed to be playing against, but then when I, you know, <laughs> it, it, the RNG of trials got got to me because you know i'm only an average player so that means you know half the people in trials are better than me so it, 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 getting to the lighthouse on a team full of people like me is not a likely thing to happen 
Got it. But uh, the the new the new things definitely make it more enticing an event. Like I could see me, you know, just playing to grind things some things out because I'm going to get some wins here and there. And since it's based on wins in your passage, like you actually stand like a very good chance of winning your first four or five matches without too much problem because it is almost kind of skill match made to a degree at that point. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense. I, I definitely feel, you know, it's like I was saying about the Iron Banner, you know, you, you, you work this meter up and you lose and you don't work it up and then you win and you regain some of that lost ground. It's something that you can work towards. Like if you just played enough Crucible matches, the chances of you getting to five to level five and then buying whatever it was that you wanted <clears throat> is pretty is pretty large. I think that that's a a very easy thing to do, and that's kind of what this sounds like. You know, get to three wins, get to four wins, five wins, and we'll give you something for your time instead of oh, lost a match. Might as well just start this passage over again uh, because we're not going to get anything of of worth. <clears throat> I think that that'll bring in just a ton more people. Well, uh, remember so- the big draw for going to the lighthouse was not more armor, but it was just being able to get the primaries with elements. Totally. Which have been absent this go around so far. Yep. No, except for one. Well, yeah. For some reason that's the only exotic primary and it's not mythical last. That I'm has, so excited. Uh, oh and uh what's it called? A necrochasm. Yeah, that no one cares about. <laughs> which <laughs> which weapon are you guys either. talking about? Another one those are leveled up. Oh, Solo that super one. Yeah. I want it so bad. It looks so beautiful, and having an arc primary is would be so sweet. It's an amazing weapon, <clears throat> especially when you get leveled up and you get the end perks on it. It like just fixes everything that's wrong with it. All right, River. So, what do you uh, what do you think about all that? All right. So, did a drop exclusively winning teams. That's good. Passage coins getting given to you guys. That's good. Uh, I I really like how these changes are really helping out both inexperienced crucible players and veterans at the same time, because these bounties could give you some pretty good gear. Even if you don't get to the lighthouse, I've never made it to the lighthouse. I've come super close that first time, that first week, last time the trials, uh, I mean, trials prior to the taken King. And I just was never able to get back up there. Uh, because I think the second time I did an LFG group. But the fact that you have bounties really, and especially because we have like this expanded bounties list now where we can put in more bounties, uh, I think will really help people get some of this really sweet gear that they that they want in the trials. And as far as veteran players, it, the way that they're changing up the matchmaking will help them get more competitive uh matches in so that the lighthouse just isn't just hey we're just gonna get to the lighthouse this week again uh type of thing like it's not a big deal anymore when in fact it's gonna it makes it more competitive now and lots lots of these guys love that competitiveness i like it i i like the uh those clutch moments whenever things get really tough on you uh but it's really good that they're gonna try and facilitate wins uh, first, so that people who aren't that great can still have a fighting chance to, you know, get get some better gear and get more wins in that fashion. And it's well, good they that said they're the, kind of the wins is the second one. First, they're going to go yeah. by lag. No, no, no. First, they're going to go no, by no, wins. it's wins. If they can't find one matched by wins, they're not going yeah. to prioritize wins over over latency. Right. So the algorithm Uh, that it's going to check is going to check it it, if your pool like the pool is going to be which teams have the same amount of wins that you have. And from that pool, it's going to say, okay, uh, who's got the best connection there? And if it can't find one. Yeah. And if it can't find one out of that pool, then it's going to take out the winning algorithm that like it's going to start with the fresh slate and then it's going to look for better connections first and then see and and it'll probably see then well who's got say you have two wins 
well, who's got three wins now? Let's see if we can hook you up with someone who has three wins. And then it'll do uh, the skill algorithm and see which one's got the closest skill match. And then, boom, you're ready to play. Okay, so this is this is exciting to me because far too many I've, I've seen far too many examples of people who are like, oh, I'm just going to go back in and and end people's cards like this is what they were looking forward to was ending people's cards. And I thought for certain that there had to have been a level of this is how many wins versus this is how many wins. But if you are that super group that just eat people like they're dregs, you're just ending cards right and left. <clears throat> that seems really horrible. It seems like a really horrible fate. Why would you put the mm-hmm. best weapons and gear in the game behind all of these turds, man? You know, like the, that's that's <laughs> what they are as turds. And so I'm I'm cu- I'm curious <laughs> to know if these players may continue to play in the trials past nine wins, but they won't get any better gear. Uh, if this is going to help filter them out, you know, It'd like be funny if well, they no, like no, get the stuck thing. at nine wins <laughs> and they're only matched with people with nine wins. Right. <laughs> right. That's what as I'm talking about. Th- exactly. Exactly. As well, it should be. It is. Uh, and uh, that's exciting. This is exciting uh, because instead of going up against somebody who's already been through a bunch of times and they just and they just know no limits, I want to go up against somebody who has three wins. You know, I, I think that that's. But I don't think that you can. What you can do a trials passage, get to nine wins, and then like get a fresh trials passage and just start again, and then you're going to have one win. Yeah. Yeah. See, we so those, really don't know how it's going to work after that. After you complete your passage of nine and zero, uh, personally, I would like to see that every person who completes a nine and zero passage, if they continue to do trials, they're stuck at nine wins, like for the rest of the do, trials. Yeah. Right. That would and be then, awesome. Yeah, and then they're stuck in their own pool with these other people who've done now, the lighthouse. It's there is a downside to that. There's going to be people who can barely manage to make nine wins to go to the lighthouse, and they try real hard and work real hard and maybe put together an extra good fire team to do that. But now, the only way you get Trials gear is through end-of-match rewards. So all those people that, if you do good and work your way up to nine, you're essentially barring yourself from the ability to easily farm or like try to farm more you know, or Cyrus pieces, because you're only going against 9-0 and teams and stuff like that if that were the case. I think that that's what they're trying to do. It says players may continue to play in the trials past 9 wins, but they won't get any better gear. So you mm-hmm. can't you can't grind this anymore. Once you, you don't think you can get fresh trials passages, you just get one per weekend event now is what you're saying. I think that no, that's why they added in. You can still one if you want. I think that that's why they added in players that go undefeated on their passage will continue to be invited to the lighthouse. Like, I think that that's why they did this. So what they're doing is they're flipping a switch. Uh, here is what you've got for this week. It's like when the nightfall thing lights up. You know, it's, yeah, you can run it again, but you're not going to get anything better. You're not going to get anything more for it. Do you see? I mean, I'm hoping that's how it works. Uh, well, that's they're, they're what not I'm hoping for that, I would agree with you. I, I, I would be interested. That would make it a lot easier for everybody else in trials. But they didn't specifically state that anywhere. I don't know that one. That <laughs> one statement, though, players may continue to play in trials past nine wins, but they won't get any better gear. It is is very vague. It's true. What? It's very true. How is it vague? So they won't a... get better gear. Yeah, but okay. Does that mean you can't play? You can continue to play past nine on one passage, but you won't get better gear. But you could go turn in that passage, get a new passage, and then play up to nine again, or and you'd be rated at one, two, three. You know, it, it well, doesn't that's what, that's what we were saying is that it once you complete nine and zero, oh, then any passages you have for that same weekend will put you in that pool of nine and zero. Oh. That's what I would hope. For. They're, that's they're doing with these guys. That's one thing they're vague about is what happens after that nine wins. That statement implies that perhaps something like you're saying will occur, but they, they don't elaborate. Okay. Um, uh, so I have I have a, a question for you guys too. Um, with the introduction of bounties, do you think that means Brother Vance is going to have rep for us to grind with him too? Yes. Because that's what bounties do, right? They increase reputation. 
unless it just gave you crucible reps so because there's not a new rep pull. But yeah, I would hope that you gain rep and that would be another way of earning his gear is like when you, you know, complete a level, you might get a package from him with a piece of trials gear in it. Can you name any other, any other bounties that does not give rep? Well, the, some bounties give rep in multiple slots. Right. But can you name bounties that give zero reputation? What if the bounties are for a specific piece of gear? Like, do this bounty and get this chest piece. Like, it doesn't have anything to do with reputation. It just goes to a specific thing. Like, you want this gun? Pick this bounty up, complete this this thing, and then that bounty, you can just click accept or whatever. That's what I would like to see. That'd be Super awesome. simulant confirmed. Because that's because that's the way this that's the way this reads. Uh, it reads. Kind of like the Elder Safer work to a degree would be nice, maybe. You know what I mean? Like you, you want a primary, do this bounty, and then you get to select one of the trials primaries when you're done. Right, Brother Vance now has trial bounties available each weekend to provide players with a way to get sweet trials gear, even if they're not reaching the lighthouse. So if if they're taking away the having to go to Brother Vance for your other gear then it would make sense that this would, you know, it, it wouldn't be a reputation-based system. It would be a, this is what you want it to be. Or it could even so be it's more like ambiguous. Finish a, mission, finish a mission, you get the mission reward. Kind of like that. Yeah, I, w- I would say that. Or or it could be more ambiguous. It could be like, well, here is a Trials Legendary. You know, do this bounty and you get some Trials Legendary. That That seems a little bit more Bungie's Destiny the Game style. You know, like, well, we don't know what you're getting and you don't know what you're getting, but it's, it's going to be something. Ho, ho, ho. RNG. It's going to be something. <laughs> 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 um, so moving on or continuing or what? Well, um, that, that that's it for the weekly update this week. Um, although there are a couple other issues in the community that could be discussed. You mentioned one briefly there when you were t- giving it one of your examples. Um, blue flames are gone. Your head is not on fire once you complete the nightfall. Shame. That's a freaking shame. I so, agree. Yeah. Um, th- there is a sentiment in the community. Basically, you know, I, I want my freaking blue flames back. So uh, we'll see how Bungie responds to that. But the, the community has spoken. They want their blue flames back. Well, the more important reason why the blue flames being gone is bad is because it's really hard to tell if you've done the nightfall except for (laughs) the one place the director (laughs) that's a really good point that's a really good Mm -hmm. point i would oftentimes just look at my character name and just put a buff that says nightfall completed we don't need the the extra increase yet until they figure that out but yeah i'd say give us the 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 ring around our head back just so we know that we've done it on that character well not only that but i always thought that that was supposed to be a visual indicator of who has already completed nightfall so that randoms can find other randoms in the tower that need to do it yet so that people Mm -hmm. who are looking for other people to do nightfall with aren't bugging people who already have completed it because you can tell who did it by whose head's flaming in the tower and who's not Uh, how's this it it's better to have it in there it than it is not to have it yeah, I totally agree. Done. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm starting to think like, like, what if you're the one guy who hasn't done your raid yet, and then you're taking your picture at the end of the, or no, you haven't done the nightfall, and you're taking your picture at the end of the raid, and you're the only one that doesn't have the blue flames. You're easily ostracized, just thrown out of that group. Like I hear that's what nah. people do nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. I freaking edit the picture and just put swag underneath it. <laughs> put on that stupid sideways hat and those glasses. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, <clears throat> I'm sad that it's gone, but it really, as <laughs> the worst part really is, that I don't know now if I did the nightfall on this character just by <laughs> just by hitting the star button really quickly, uh, <clears throat> but that's only because I have orbit. six characters. What's that? Like you can't tell only when you're in orbit. Like if you wanted to know now, did I do the nightfall yet or not on this character while you're standing in the tower? You have no way of knowing. Right, and you can't even hit the start button to see if you've got your uh, your like gone through the nightfall unscathed or whatever. That does, that's not existence anymore. That was the buff that they I, took away. I know. That's what I'm saying. Now you don't have even that. Oh, now you don't have that option. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 
Um, so I don't know. I don't know. It's sad. Moving on. Moving on. So uh, the uh, another small issue the community is having, and it was uh, summed up in- nicely by a post on Reddit where a guy says, who's more stubborn, me for spending an hour trying to solo a strike so I don't lose my strike streak, or uh, Bungie for refusing to add two people to replace the ones that left me at the beginning of the strike. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, there, there seems to be a real issue where uh, people are not being replaced to bail on strikes. And with the new strike streak bonuses, you know, people are playing through difficult heroic strikes to build up a streak, and they don't want to lose that. And it, it, since no one knows what strike they're going into until it's too late to choose to drop out of the playlist, uh, people are getting stuck by themselves in heroic strikes all the time and forced to either spend forever soloing it or just bailing and starting their streak all over again. Right. This is uh this sucks. This sucks. I've had it happen to me so many times where people will just they'll just quit from right at the beginning and it's like, well, I I want to keep going because I've built this I've built this streak. I, I think maybe if they explained a little bit better what the streak actually did, you know, in terms of because I don't know that I've <clears throat> I don't know that I've played more than four or five in a row <clears throat> and i don't know if i've even noticed what i should like like what the bonus was you know like is there a percentage of of engrams that it drops more or is it like 10 percent better chance like like should i also just quit and start my thing over you know it, it i don't know it, it sucks it sucks. I I hate having to do strikes uh, by myself when the, you know this is match made. You know people jump in and then they'll see it's not the one they want and they'll just go back out. And <clears throat> the worst part is that I no longer have access to their their gamer tag, so I can report them for quitting early. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> the only the only time that I've really noticed it is after ten wins which, or ten strikes, which is an insane amount of strikes to run in a row. Ten. Ten? Yeah. yeah. So what are you getting after ten strikes? Uh, it seemed to be quite almost a legendary every time, every finish. How long does that but take it, you? I felt oh, like to get I, ten I wins. Like after, I felt like after the very first one there is like a significant little boost, like your first strike isn't as good, then the second strike you get decent loot, but then that kind of maintains for like you said until you get way up there. Well, so I think there's awesome. a little bump right off the bat, and then like, but then it doesn't really increase dramatically until you get like he said to like ten. Uh, here's my question for you then, Jez. Like, how many times did you go after ten in that streak? I don't know, like three or four. Three or four, and you got a legendary every time. Uh, it seemed to be either a legendary oh. or a legendary in Graham. I'm like oh, that's the- insane. That's 2.0. crazy. <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, that could also be just a random stroke of luck after 10 wins, but it's all anecdotal. Yeah, all it says is bonus loot and reputation. We continue to cycle. So I think what from what it says is that I guess you just earn more loot throughout the strikes, like throughout all the enemies that you're killing. Crazy. That's awesome. No, obviously no percentages that pro- they probably don't want to give that much information away. I don't know. They should they should put out something. You know, like even if it was just a statement saying, "Hey, you know, if you're three or four strikes in and people start bailing on you, you know, maybe you should just start it over. It's not that big of a deal." <laughs> when someone bails, it should give you the re- like not the reward of them, but like the streak of them so that your luck increases <laughs> by whatever fold. I like that. Uh, freaking give you a plus three if you your other two freaking leave. Or you know what? What if what if when <laughs> your other two left, they just they continued your streak. Uh, they they kept it where it is, and they just match made you into another one. Like if both yeah, people like if both people pull out because. Because I don't want it to be something that people can game, you know, like me and Sharks and Agrios go into a group, 
with, uh, you know, and then two of us leave and then that person gets, you know, well, I guess it wouldn't matter because we would not have given him very far, very much of those bonus. Yeah, just just redoing the redoing the the matchmaking instantly is is really what it needs. I've been in. No, I've, I'll I've, tell you what it needs. It needs a little pop up at when it's counting down the last mission, when it's yeah. thirty seconds remaining. Up next, Axor That's the little priest. <laughs> Right, that would that's wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. You're so totally you're right. saying so that what saying. whenever you're getting towards the end, that it's going to start matchmaking you already. Well, no. it's going to tell you what you're going into next, so you can leave then. Right. So instead of instead of these people being matchmade into a uh, something they didn't want to be in, and then you're now stuck with two people who wouldn't have done this anyways. At the end of that last match, it says, oh, up next is this strike. So they can leave from there, so they will never have been put into the pool to begin uh, with. I like that. Basically, yeah. anybody who stays from that group is going into that strike, and if not, they're going to match make the rest. So whoever leaves, they'll just match make for If everybody leaves, well, then that's just dropped anyway. Um, I, like I like it, too. I like it a lot. Uh, so, continuing. So, continuing. Um, th th this is uh, something that was very simply and very well put on Reddit, and I felt was worth talking about because I feel like I'm this person quite often. But uh, famous last words in Destiny. <laughs> what the fuck am I stuck on? <laughs> 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 that yeah. was never darn, me darn that geometry <laughs> oh yeah man, you what? did so <laughs> you... <laughs> man like oh. you can you, know, you can scale up sheer walls walk up like you know cl stony pillars but like you'll back up and get stuck on a pebble and not be able to move this is a very vague reference to uh, the raid but if you're ever in a pool in the I want to say lower left pool and you try to run out there's a rock that you'll just get stuck on that's funny that's I'll funny tell you the worst was the uh the stairs in uh, the hive area of prison of elders dude i get stuck on those stairs all the time trying to go back up them or something like i just always get stuck on those stairs with my warlock i feel like if you looked at a heat map of the entirety of me playing that I'm in the air more often than I'm on the ground. I don't really, I don't trust the geometry to begin with. So I just bounce upstairs. Like I'm always in the air because I know for most, mostly a fact that I'm not going to get hung up on rocks on the ground while I'm in the air. Like I'm just, I'm just like boing, boing <laughs> everywhere I go. I'd really like to see a heat map of, <laughs> of all of my time <laughs> playing destiny. No doubt, freaking bring those heat maps back, man. Right, that would be I'd so to awesome. See heat maps of like the raid after it's been out for a couple of months or something like those would be cool to see. I think it would be like a it would be like a cat scan, like like charting you know some kind of cancer growth. You know, like here's where people started out most, and then once once word got out that this is the path, seeing how quickly it it narrowed down. Uh, and this is this is an interesting point because I was playing with uh, I was playing with a guy Ghost Warhawk on the Xbox 360, and we were we were going through um, Vault of Glass hard, and they went a, a, an entirely different way to that to that second chest, not the first Gorgon chest to the left, but the one to the right, uh, and their way wasn't as good. <laughs> their way they kept getting caught, and I went the way that I had been taught. Uh, by sharks and agrios and i didn't get caught at all and they finally gave up they finally gave up, gave up on trying to get around to it so that's that would be interesting to see what it looked like you know after a certain amount of time where everybody was because remember in especially like the um that <clears throat> the the strike on venus when everybody was hiding under those grates and now everybody hangs mm -hmm. out 
on that on that wall that you first show up into. Like I I never stood over there until they stopped letting you hide under the grates. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Even after they stopped letting you hide under the grates, I still hid under the grates because <laughs> there's this one way you could get under there. I don't know why they didn't put like a like just an invisible wall there. Why didn't they put an invisible wall in that part uh-huh. on Crota? What's that? I said, don't encourage that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I mean, so here's my thought process on this: is that they have to know that that's what people are doing because they're monitoring everything. So there, it has to mean something that they haven't done that. You know, they haven't, they didn't take away jumping to the top of that tower. Why didn't they take away jumping to the top of that tower? Why didn't they just put a wall in so you can't fly across? Like, there has to be some reason. It would have to be the easiest thing ever to just put a block of impassable terrain, invisible, impassable terrain. Probably the easiest thing. Oh, really? Thing. Oh, I, really? Yeah, I would say so. This I is, would say so. This is semi related, but. Did you ever like completely finish the uh, the strike? Or sorry, the mission lost the light. Like the way that you originally completed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember when you leave? There's this giant rock in the middle. Yes. Of, <laughs> uh, it just occurred to one of my clanmates that hey, they put that rock there because there's a dead guardian there, and that's the only way they could cover it up. <laughs> <laughs> You That's can funny. Still his hand poking out, can't you? Uh, I didn't. I didn't do it myself, so I didn't check it. But yeah, it's it's kind of kind of silly. His okay. hand poking out one corner of the rock. It's kind of funny. Like it looks like a rock fell on a guardian. <laughs> okay, so I'm glad you brought that up, Jez, because it it reminded me of something I wanted to bring up to you guys to see if you knew. There is a named wizard at the end of that strike like Skolor or Skovax or something like this. Like, right as you're running through the door, there's a named wizard there. Has anyone killed him? Yeah. Um, I thought I, I just, did. I just killed it. I just ran the mission. I just yeah. killed So you, you killed that named wizard at the end. Did it give you anything, like a grimoire or anything? No. I'm curious. No. I'm just curious to know why they put a named character at the end of that strike. It just seems so... So weird. A lot of that in Taken King. I've noticed a bunch of named characters in odd places that I half expected to get a grimoire for and did not. So that that seems common to this expansion. I think that goes along with the fact that they're trying to increase the storytelling. Like I think that's to give it more character. Like it, it like this this guy's kind of like one of the lieutenants or something like that. Like he he actually has character. He has a name. Maybe even, you know, the name might get name dropped in someone else's grimoire at some point or something like that. So I, I think it's just there for depth. <clears throat> you know, I could see that. Uh Urzlock the Hated is a very well known a very well known knight. Uh and I think that I think that that's really cool. A really cool thing for them to do. I haven't killed it yet, and I just noticed that this last time I was running it, I was like, there's a named wizard there. Uh and there was like four seconds left, and I thought I have to go back and kill it and see what happens. Now, there are certain certain somewhat hidden bosses that can be defeated for certain special rewards at different places. So your instincts oh. are to follow those. Oh, you're totally right. Uh, there are instances where that might even be something that um, Petra sends, sends us out after. Uh, I started getting bounties again from, the, uh, from Petra. And so I could definitely see that being something that they that they put that out there for. Very interesting. Uh, continuing. One last thing. Um, this is an issue that uh, our friend uh, Jaden actually first had, and we when he uh, in the very first week uh, he, we completed a nightfall, and he wasn't sure whether he got the nightfall rewards or not because we were right at changeover. And the other part of the reason was the reward he received was an antiquated rune. Now, it's become known that these are relatively common nightfall rewards now, but an antiquated antiquated rune as a nightfall reward is essentially giving you a light 300 boss as a reward with non-nightfall tier rewards after you beat him. (laughs) That's a reward somebody from Reddit. So um, that is very, very true. 
And uh, how do you guys feel about these as being uh, fairly prevalent Nightfall rewards, antiquated runes to just get the chance to fight a tier three boss okay. and get non Nightfall rewards from him? The whole thing is nuts. The whole thing is nuts. So they've they've taken the burn down from doing three times the damage to two times the damage. Only for the Guardian, the enemies in the room still do three times the damage on the burn. And they've introduced these really horrible, really, really horrible rewards. Uh, like the, the Three of Coins. The Three of Coins is a cool addition to the game. I think they released it a little too hastily because they didn't. They didn't have the foreshadow, the foreknowledge to think, oh, these people are going to, these people are going to um, misuse these. You know, someone like Agrios is going to get a hold of several hundred of these and just stock up. Like I don't know where you're, where you've put all these exotics, Agrios. I've got basically no room in in any of the uh, in any of my spaces. And, I have 15 uh, exotic engrams of ar- uh, weapon engrams and 15 exotic armor engrams. I haven't even decrypted yet. Right, this is what I'm talking about. I have no idea where you've placed these, um, but in, but to get th- five three of coins and a single strange coin is a slap in the face. You know, it's a slap in the face for the the time that you've spent there. You know, like like those things. I could see it being a legendary engram, uh, five three of coins and one strange coin. That would be cool. I would be happy with that nightfall reward, uh, but just. I mean, you, they've given you they've given you eight strange coins worth of of stuff for the nightfall, which is supposed to be something awesome. It's supposed to be something awesome. The only nightfall I've run, uh, no, I ran two nightfalls. One nightfall I got the Jade Rabbit. First nightfall I got the Jade Rabbit. Uh, not all it's cracked up to be. I'm just misusing it. I'm pretty certain. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but but for people to get these five the, these five three of coins is it's it's horrible it's horrible why are they doing this to people like I would be so frustrated especially because last week's saber uh, was kind of rough you know you got to that void section and there was a lot of dying a lot of snipers taking you out so you you actually you need to put in the work to do this and they're not giving it to you you don't you don't get a reward that's that's worthy of it. I think that sucks. River, have you uh, have you run into this yet? No. I mean, I ran a Nightfall and I got Celestial Nighthawk. So awesome. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I've only I've only ran the Nightfall once, and I really think I don't really think uh, Three of Coins is that bad, man. I mean, I you, well, you, the issue it's the potential the, really. The issue with the Five of Coins as a reward is when I ran it. I got five of coins. One of my friends got five of coins. My other friend got 13 strange coins, which is almost the same as 10. Right. So it's like you're giving us this reward that's notably lesser. You can't use it for as many things and less of it. But the potential is still there. Well, the issue is that he had that potential plus seven frame uh, plus six strange coins. What right. should happen is five of coins should be the default. Antiquated runes should not be a reward for a nightfall. It's like you should be you should run a nightfall, get five, three of coins, and an actual reward. Right, but I, I think getting run. that antiquated rune would be cool in addition to an actual reward. Like here is just a bonus something. Well, me that could work as well, but just having one is not worth it because you could use all five of those coins, like obviously not at the same time, and get nothing. But you could use all five and get five exotics. I've never seen that. Agrios, what are the numbers <laughs> on that? <laughs> not saying it. Agrios knows. <laughs> Agrios likely. knows full full well what you what you could get at at maximum throttling capacity. Agrios, what was your what was your best run? Was there ever a chance when you were like just five exotics right in a row? No, no, never. Um, like on average, you're you're probably on average it's about one exotic per five to seven three of coins. So at one, one exotic per six three of coins, we'll say. Okay, so that's so so I I I river I like the three of coins. I think it's awesome, but it's not. It, this wasn't a reward. This is a a possible reward. 
You know, that's yeah. why I'm, that's why I'm saying there there needs to be there needs to be something tangible. Even if it's just a legendary weapon, I'm going to break down and only get three marks from. That to me has a greater a, a See, greater effect on what time I've spent in the nightfall. Not to the mention that, that can that, have random rolls that yours don't have that you might like better. Exactly, that is important too. And, and that well, the exotics can have random rolls as well, as long as it's not a weapon. But uh, I, I think the real important point, though, to take away is, although I, I say that you probably average one exotic per six of coins, that's an average. Now, that means that occasionally you're going to get, you know, two per six, three of coins, and occasionally you're going to go a dozen or more three of coins with no exotic. That's going to be like an extreme, extreme, extreme case. And in fact, I don't know that you could actually make it that far without getting one. But my point is that you might get five or ten strange of coin, three, three, uh, yeah, I'm screwing up now, five or ten three of coins as a reward. You might process all those and not actually get an exotic out of it. So you literally got nothing. But here's the thing with the potential of it. And I, and I understand that, yes, you're probably going to get zero. And that's more likely to happen because we've all seen it. But the fact is that you have this chance, this set chance of getting an exotic due to RNG. They freaking roll the fucking dice. And wherever that dice freaking lands, you, you'll get your appropriate reward based on that. But the potential is still there. It, it's the same every single time. It's not like you use one, you get. I mean, it's not like you can get less of a chance. You use I one, you get more, more every time. Well, I think it's more the challenge involved with getting a nightfall reward specifically, rather than any of the other places that these types of rewards come from, and that some people have a lot more limited time than others, and those yeah. that have you know more limited valuable play time who have chosen to dedicate it to doing the Nightfall this week, for them to get five, three of coins isn't really cool. Yeah, hey, play our game some more, buddy. <laughs> how, about, how about this for... If you did uh, Flawless Trials of Osiris River, would you happy be happy if at the end they're like, okay, here you go, some five of coins? At the end of Trials of Osiris? What, the lighthouse? Right. Yeah. Let's say I don't you think that's lighthouse. comparable. I don't oh, know. I, I think that's comparable. I think it is. I think no, it it's is not. Too. It's totally comparable. It no, it's you spend not. all that time and you get this reward that is so unfulfilling for what you put into it. This makes yeah, it. The nightfall is not going to not want keep you for it. like it four hours. <laughs> it took me less time to get to the lighthouse than it's taken me to complete some weeks' nightfalls. Wait, you got to the lighthouse? Yeah, that yeah. girl's been to the lighthouse. Who'd you have on your team? <laughs> Some two, Sherpas. <laughs> two, like, MLG-quality Sherpas. <laughs> oh, wow. That's incredible. No wonder you got to the lighthouse so quickly. But okay. my point is that good players can do that event that quickly. Uh -huh. So I think <laughs> that his statement about is this reward justified is acceptable because I, okay. there are players out there who are going to do it every week for, in 45 minutes. What if it wasn't even that? What if it was you go to the lighthouse and you'd be like, oh, you can either get an emblem or you could get your actual primary that you want, but instead you get the emblem. Would you be like, oh, wow, I really feel like running Charles of the Cyrus? Again. Wait, do you only get one one item no. from the lighthouse? No, no, no. no lighthouse? This, is, this is hypothesis. Why are we talking hypotheses? Well, because it's a hypothesis if you're going to get loot from this thing at all. <laughs> or, yeah. <hypothetic. laughs> no, it's not It's not a hypothesis. You you will it's, or you will not. That's it's like black and white. No, oh. hey, hey, hypothetical question. A hypothetical that if you did... Charles of Osiris and got nothing for it, would you feel like doing it again? Or, like in this case, it's just a chance to get something. But you already had the chance to get something. It's called doing the Nightfall. <laughs> and you've already done the Nightfall. And what you got was a chance to go do some other stuff. I don't know. Especially I if it's a really <clears throat> tough Nightfall. Like, on top of things, if it's a really particularly tough Nightfall and they all have the same rewards table, like, that's... See, I can see that being a bad new player experience. Somebody just gets high mm. enough to do their Nightfall finally. They tackle the Nightfall this week. They spend an hour and a half in it because they're brand new, first Nightfall ever. And they get an antiquated rune or five, three of coins, which they end up getting nothing for, maybe. 
that's a uh, bad that new player experience. <laughs> right, so, that man. sucks. So or they're they, like uh, Agrios and they're like, <laughs> oh, I just bought 100 of these the other day. Right. <laughs> right. Like, that's a bad new player experience, like, in a nutshell. <laughs> I had two MLG players help me out. <laughs> I'm I'm in. I'm I'm behind that. I would love to have two MLG players come hey, and help me mop me up too. some, some you dudes. You could have two MLG players help you through the nightfall. You still think it was a waste of time. If yeah, you got nothing. That's true. I, I tell you what. I've been way more reluctant to to even want to try nightfalls now that I've seen what other people are getting, and I've gotten good stuff both times. Like I got uh, Crest of the Alpha Loopy for my hunter. Uh, year two, you know, that's cool. I, I like having the ability to res and, and uh, be resed faster. Like, that is that is definitely very useful. Um, you know, I'm thinking that the heroic strikes actually make Nightfalls make me, like, a horrible player. Like, not, not that I die a lot. It's just I'm constantly rushing in like it's a normal strike. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, funny. I've been doing that too. Uh, so yeah, so so I got I got the crest of the alpha loopy and I got the jade rabbit. But I've been watching people post pictures of yeah five three of coins and a coin or five three of coins and and six coins. Like like it it doesn't make me want to do it. It doesn't it, you know especially because the because they've they've raised how hard it is to do. You know it's it's two times damage instead of three times damage for the burn. So instead of it being, you know, oh, well, I walked through this nightfall and I got some crappy reward, it was I died several times and had to really, really try. I had to reach deep and I got a bunch of three of coins like it's it, it has turned me off from being interested in doing the nightfall. I've I've only done it when when I've been invited to it and I don't have an excuse to not do it. <laughs> like Agrios was there the other night. We were gonna do something else, and then Turks was like, "Hey, you guys want to run the nightfall?" And Agrios is like, "Well, I got plenty of times, ch- plenty of chances to run the nightfall. Why don't you have Remy do it?" And so I did it. We did it, and uh, and it was tough. It was tough, and then people got some crappy rewards. <laughs> um, why don't we uh, Why don't we move this along? Three of coins sucks, Bungie. You know, give us something better. <laughs> Or or put that in addition. I really think a legendary engram and and five three of coins would be awesome. I I feel that. Or a legendary engram and ten strange coins. Like at least give us a, some enough to buy something from Zer. That's what makes sense to me. I you know, agree. I've I've passed your I've passed your barrier of complete this nightfall, and now I would like a reward. I don't want a chance at a reward while I'm doing something else again later. I already bought a bunch of those. Like that's that's really what it's like a slap in the face to me because I buy those three of coins, so I have some on hand so I can use them throughout the week. And then the biggest chance I have to get anything good in this game, I'm gonna get more three of coins. Like I've already got some. You know, who doesn't who's running Nightfalls that doesn't already have those? Who who is interested in them? You know, they really missed their chance when they took away the Nightfall buff to put like a random portal on the Dreadnought that opens up if you have the Nightfall buff. Yeah. Yeah, that's because they don't have you working for them. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Uh, Moving on. Um, Well... Uh, normally, I wrap up the, the weekly update talk with the movie of the week discussion, which but uh, we talked about that earlier today about uh, the guy tearing it up in Rumble with the Arc Sword. So instead, let, let's talk about another movie of the week. Uh, River put out a r- very entertaining unboxing video this week. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. At yeah, least that's what I'm told, that it's very entertaining. Excellent. I haven't seen that yet. Oh, yeah. I highly recommend everybody go check it out. It's a great video. Nope. Uh, in in my world, there's these periods of time where I'm like, I'm going to do this, and mm-hmm. then and then in between then and now, my world is it's like I live in a one of those snow globes, you know, like oh, time to change a diaper, and then you know, it, oh yeah, it's basically like trying to get the black spindle. Like I just want to finish the mission. Oh, look at this! We've got to do something else. Oh, we died. Have to do the whole thing over. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Black spindle missions is more punishing than nightfalls now. 
Um, it totally is. <laughs> well, but you get a good, you get a good, um, you get something worth it out after yeah, that. You know what I find interesting is that people are complaining about the farming for exotic swords, but it's a guaranteed three ten. You can yeah, farm what? exotic swords. No, no, no! Farming like the, the, the materials, the planetary the materials, and it takes like oh. sixteen for one, and you need ten of them, so you have to like farm one hundred and sixty or something, and they're complaining the hell out of it. <laughs> yeah, they're, com- they're complaining that you have to farm that much just for oh, no. that one step. <laughs> and please, but it's like you get a three ten sword. That's the best right? heavy level, uh, light level that you could get. Well, and I, I, gar- I guarantee that 310 sword is going to take me less time than me trying to get the chaperone right now. Like, <laughs> 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 the poor Crimson. I'm sorry, man. Well, it's, it's, I, I know it's going to be a grind, and I know I'll learn a lot of things from it, but I know I'll get my swords faster than I get the chaperone. You're absolutely correct, sir. I need to look into that. I don't have any idea what goes into uh, getting those exotic swords. I well, could tell you. You could. <laughs> you could. You could. I should probably have you tell me, but I'll have you tell me later. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so is that it? That is it. Thanks, Agrios. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. You kick Good ass, video. Agrios. Oh, and you kick ass, River. <laughs> oh, thank you. I try. I can't I try wait most to see that unboxing video. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so is there anything else anybody wanted to talk about Destiny? It looks like we have about five minutes before we have to wrap this up. Nothing, huh? It's awesome. It's yeah, awesome. I got something to talk about. When are we going to raid, Remy? Remy? When are we going to raid? I just need when to say I that on air 290. Yet. Right. Uh, you know what? We could raid it at any point in time, Agrios. Any time that you... Like let's uh, let's set it for this weekend, but I mean, there's there's plenty of people who want to run it with us. It's just that we would have to run it with people who have already seen this stuff before, and I don't know that that all of them are as creative as River and would give us their first impressions. That was really smart, River. That was Thank that you. would be that would be really funny, you know. Like you could, <laughs> it reminds me of like the uh, the jungle ride, uh, the jungle cruise ride in Disneyland. Where that guy's like, what? oh, watch out for the hippos. You know, they're, uh, or don't worry about them. They only get mad when they blow bubbles and flip their ears. You don't know what I'm talking about? You've never been oh, to I do remember that. Yes. It would be wow. like that. Like you're there and like, oh, you know, as long as these guys don't cross this bridge or, you know, <laughs> everything will be cool. Like, I think that would be really funny. That would be really, uh, really good, <laughs> really good watching. <laughs> oh, um, Crimson, on. Um- what step of the chaperone are you on? Are you still on the plus word step? Yeah. Do mayhem. 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 Yep. Oh, because it doesn't have to be... You don't have to kill with the last word. You just have to have it equipped, Equip. right? Yeah, and it seems like everything's ramped up in mayhem. And like some dude went from 40% to 60% with one six-person kill grenade. Because nice. everybody, everything's worth so much more points and everything there. It probably is factored off of that same situation. Hmm. I did it in control. It was rough. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry uh-huh. for just completely <laughs> distracting. I just seen something on my feed that said mayhem. Well, I'll, I'll, and, uh, I'll try it. I'll try it. See what happens. Fred, uh, Fred Hogg wants to know if uh, we're streaming post-streaming after the stream. <laughs> um the stream yeah. yeah we could we could definitely do a post stream uh do you guys have any idea what you want to do well we can always quarter like work if we don't have anything better to do yeah yeah we could do that what What are you thinking river me what do, what do you I need mean... to do because if you're going to come along with us then we should probably cater to the light level 240 that you are yeah, well, that that's the thing. I'm I'm light 240, so it's not like I can raid or nightfall or even do heroic strikes yet. So, you can come to the court. It works. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I got at least one rune. Well, yeah, being maybe. that you're only 240, you should probably ramp up with a shit ton of stuff from the from the court of orcs. <laughs> yeah, today has been a very <laughs> today's been a swear filled episode. Like none I of love it. It, <laughs> it has <laughs> what I love. 
I wish they could crash it. on your thing and just throw in a tier three. Just see what you do. <laughs> you know, I got I put in with. Three. I got put in with. It, it said eight guardians were were battling a tier three, and I just kind of ran around and picked off ads, and and we made it no problem. It was a lot of fun nice. actually. If you have eight people. If you have eight people in that in that court, things really just go by very quickly. So we're uh, gonna have to try to queue sync that. Yeah. Well, the easier way is to just have some blueberry in there to give up a spot. Uh, all right. So <laughs> uh, we're running out of time. Why don't we do uh, shout outs starting with Agrios? Um, shout out to the guys that helped me get Black Spindle, a name too long, and his buddy Eve. Uh, they, uh, they, they showed up, and uh, we did it in only three runs. So that was awesome. That is awesome. Jez? Um, shout out to the dude from the Bungie Weekly Update, because he also has the name Jeremy. Or, well, he's Jeremiah, but it's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah Peschel makes a ton of sense. Crimson Warlock. Um, my my shout outs to Tyrell and his cousin who helped me get my black spindle yesterday. It was a good day. That's awesome. Awesome. River. Uh, my shout outs to uh, Twitter account Sarah the Rebel. She actually wrote this pretty nice article about. Uh, it's called the surprising truth about Destiny. You read it. You read it, Remy. Yep. And it's talking about uh, the representation of women and minorities in Destiny, which I was kind of... I, I didn't even realize just how inclusive this game was until she wrote that article. And so uh, the reason, one of the reasons I'm pointing it out, too, is that she did ask for some pictures of Guardians, female, female Guardians, and I provided one on there that she included in the article. So it's a really good read. Uh, pretty enlightening. Definitely go check it out. It's uh, again the title is the surprising truth about destiny, and the site is called remeshed.com. Yeah, really great article, and mm -hmm. uh, and 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 she really hit the nail on the head. It's an it's an invisible thing because that's the yeah. way it would be. You know, here's just mm -hmm. this person of of a race, of a sex, of a you know, like this is just the way it would be. There is there is no surprises. There is no like here is what the world would look like around you. And I, I feel like um, M. E. Have, I think is their name, um, said like, you know, here, you know, this was done intentionally and we don't draw attention to it because this is just the way it would be. This is just the way it should be. You know, like e. we're not going to. Emmy Chung. Yeah, we're not going to we're yeah. not going to toot our own horn about this because this is. This is what it should be. This is the way it should be. So yeah, awesome. That's the, that's the way it is everywhere, but one place. <laughs> exactly the real world. <laughs> no, 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 no. no that, that's the grenade placement on the female armamentarium. <laughs> oh, <laughs> naughty, naughty. Uh, my <clears throat> shout out is to Lord Shax. Uh, we've been spending a lot more time together than in in previous uh, in previous months of Destiny. Uh, and I feel like even when he's telling you that you're not doing a good enough job to win, I don't feel like he's ever he's ever really hurtful about it. You know, like I, I played one game of I can't even remember what it was. It was like Battlefield or one of the Call of Duties. I think it was the latest Call of Duty. It plays exactly the same as Destiny, but it feels like Destiny would if you were trying to play it with the Kinect. It's really, <laughs> really horrible controls. Uh, but in that game, I lost. I lost the one PvP match that I played, and the person said, "Get your shit together," to me. Uh, and I don't, I don't appreciate right. that. I don't appreciate that at all. Like, like that doesn't make me want to do better. You telling me to get my shit together doesn't make me want to do better. Uh, but when Shaq says something like, "Well, that's not gonna win. Uh, that's not gonna do it for the Crucible or whatever," like he's he's telling me I'm not good enough, but he's doing it in a way that's, well, it's British. <laughs> really? I, don't like it. I don't like it when he yells at me and tells me to control the zones. I, I, I see. I'm in for it. I, sometimes I need to be told what to do. Oh, good idea. I will control these zones. <laughs> but don't tell me to get my shit together. That's that's rude. <laughs> but that's the one line that he really sounds like he's getting pissed at. He's like, control the zones. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if you were just hearing him wrong? Like if it was if he was really like telling you you were doing a good job. <laughs> oh no no he's pissed you can tell it's the one line he's, he's pissed <laughs> um, <clears throat> I was like sorry daddy 
All right. That wraps up episode 59. I would like to thank everyone listening for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any questions or suggestions for topics to be discussed on the show, please leave them in the comments below or send them to feedback at guardian1.net and we will see you next week. Still want to call just, Did that just slip out?